Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today is actually going to be another house update video. We haven't done this in a while because we kind of hit a point where we bought everything that we felt like we absolutely needed and we spent so much money in the first like month or two of moving in that we needed to wait before we bought any other big items for the house. And that's still true, but we are making like a little bit of like updates here and there. We're staining our kitchen table and I've also really changed up the second bedroom. So I'd love to show you that today. And if you like these kind of videos, then please keep on watching. This is just some old footage of when we took our kitchen table home and it's this beautiful pine kitchen table from my childhood. We rented a U-Haul and brought it up and here's my husband, of course, putting it together for us. And it was just so amazing to finally have a kitchen table. Here is our current dining table and I'll see if I have a before video or a before picture of this. Um, but essentially before it was all this um, pine kind of brown color, but it was really beat up. This was actually my childhood kitchen table. So we brought it up from Toronto where I'm from and we just felt like, like it needed to uh, be fixed up anyway. So we thought we would stain the whole thing a darker color, but it's very, very challenging to stain the chairs and it's very time consuming. So, so far we've just lacquered the top of the table or stained and lacquered the top of the table and these three chairs. And there's actually six chairs total. Um, so I still have to do the legs and I still have to do those two chairs. And today I'm going to be staining um, this chair. I've already sanded it down. So that's why it looks so weird. There, I moved it a bit closer. So today I'm going to be staining that chair and then tomorrow I'm going to lacquer it. The lacquer does take 24 hours to dry. Um, and that's one of the reasons. I think the real the real like struggle is sanding it. I use um, this kind of hand um, power sander. And then I just kind of sand the like middle parts and stuff like that with my hands. So that's very time consuming and very difficult. So that's why it's been taking so long, but I can't wait for this to be finished. Um, and right now we're in lockdown again, so I've got nothing better to do anyway. So that is the project for today. This is the stain that I've been using. It's called Mini Wax Wood Finish in Dark Walnut. And my husband chose this color. I think I would have gone with something a little bit lighter, like still darker than the original, but not quite this dark. But he really likes dark furniture and I suppose I don't mind it. And at this point, like the table is half stained. So I've got no choice but to continue with this anyway. So this is the one that we've been using and I'm nearly done. So we're probably gonna have to buy a second can of this. And then on top of that, we have been using fast drying polyurethane semi-gloss um, lacquer so yeah I think I would if there's one that's like more glossy and not semi-gloss I would probably get that one next time because I do like a glossier look to my kitchen table but you know this is a learning process and it's the first time that we're really doing stuff like this um, other than painting the furniture so you live and you learn but I'm having a good time anyway I bought my husband this dartboard for his birthday so we are gonna put it up onto the wall there and we've got this chair and this really cool table that's made out of a Formula One tire and it's got like a certificate of authenticity and everything so I really like having the chair and the tire here and these 
these um, like weapons over here. We have a sword and an axe, and my husband is gonna wall mount them above the bed here. And I'm trying to figure out how to turn this queen size bed into basically a day bed so that my husband can hang out in here with his friend. Here it is from a different angle. So we do have our air conditioner set up here and we had to really DIY this whole kind of gross looking setup in order to get our air conditioner in here. But now this room is gonna be the nicest and coldest room through the summer. So we just really wanna find a way to make this really functional. So if I turn this queen bed into a day bed and then I've got the chair here, then this can be a really nice setup for movies. And my husband just said he wants to wall mount that TV and we're also gonna get some LED lights to put around the TV. So once that's wall mounted and I figure out a day bed situation for here, um, I think this place will look really cool. And maybe I'll come up with a solution to kind of make this look not so terrible. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll paint over the cardboard or something. I haven't really decided what to do yet, but it is gonna look like this for a while. So I wanna come up with something, but yeah, this is just gonna turn out into a really cool room. We've got like surround sound um, set up in here. There's one of the little speakers up there. So I just think this will turn into a really cool like man cave. And that's like our plan for it. Like we wanna figure out how to make this into a man cave. progress on the man cave so we just put up the sword and the axe um, that we got at comic-con and the medieval festival so that gives it kind of another kind of cool man cave look and that's our dartboard over there we just use these um, like rubber hooks drilled into the wall to hang this stuff up and it's not perfect but unless you're looking really close at it it looks fine. So I wanted to talk just a tiny little bit about this. Um, this is my journal and it says live with a grateful heart on the front. And while I was reading the Bible, which I actually finished uh, in March, I was writing down some quotes that I wanted to go back to. And I have a therapist who is also Christian, which has been just a huge blessing and she told me to write down some of the negative recurring thoughts that I have and then to find passages in the Bible to counter it with, you know, th this might be what your brain is saying about you, but what does God say about you? And these have been really, really helpful and I feel like they've really been transforming me and my life um, and it's something that's so positive. So I wanted to share it with you if you're having a lot of negative thoughts anxiety, depression, um, feeling stuck, feeling like you're grieving, um, anything like that. Like it's such a helpful practice. And since I finished the Bible, I've been writing down notes from therapy in here and um, notes from sermons, uh, like church service, online church service that I've been watching. So this is where I go and lately I have been going through something. I had a friendship breakup, which was really difficult for me, but being able to have this and go back to this has really changed um, how I'm going through it and how I'm able to get through difficult days um, a lot easier than I used to. I really struggle with thinking that everything is always my fault and everything is under my control and if anything goes wrong, it's always about me and my failures and being able to let go of that has been a really like beautiful thing in my life. Being able to let go of always being in control and letting God be in control of my life has really, really been good. So yeah, I wanted to give you a little update about this. It's still very weird for me talking about religion. It's something that I grew up not talking about, but it is something that I want to talk about, especially after reading the Bible, and the Bible is very clear about how we are supposed to talk about it, and we are supposed to, you know, share our testimony and our experience with with religion, so. 
Thank you for watching my video today and I hope to have some more updates for you soon. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.